I want to look at the relationship between cyclic groups and abelian groups. So recall that a group G is cyclic if there exists an element A in G such that G is generated by that element. In other words, G is made up of powers of A. And we can also say that the generator of a group is an element that generates the entire group. So the questions that I want to look at would be, are all cyclic groups abelian and are all abelian groups cyclic? So when you have questions like this about all types of groups, a good strategy is to try and find counterexamples. So maybe cyclic groups that aren't abelian or abelian groups that aren't cyclic. And if that doesn't work, you can't find any counterexamples, then go ahead and try and prove. So if we couldn't find a cyclic group that wasn't abelian, maybe we could try and prove that all cyclic groups are abelian. So that's going to be the strategy that we're going to use here in this video. Um, now I already know what uh, the answer is, so I'm going to try and pick examples that will illustrate the points here. But if you didn't know, you could just keep trying lots and lots of groups, think of all the different types of groups that you know, and uh, use this strategy to find a counterexample, and if you can't find one, then go ahead and try and prove it. So to start, let's look at U10. Remember, this was the uh, units modulo 10. So we're looking at things where um, the elements in the group and 10 are relatively prime, and the operation that we're looking at is multiplication modulo 10. So here's the group table. So just to remind you how this works, if you imagine 3 times 3 is 9, okay, that seems to make sense. And then if we look at maybe uh, 9 times 3, 9 times 3 is 27, but 27 modulo 10 is 7. So that's kind of how this group works. And we can see from the group table, it's very symmetric across the, the diagonal line here. This is an abelian group, but is it cyclic? So that's the question we want to look at. So let's see, how about if I look at the uh, generators here of 1? So this would be powers of 1 in a sense. So what would that give me? Well, that's just 1, because we have the identity here that's 1. And 1 times 1 gives us 1 immediately. How about 3? Look at the generators of 3. Okay, so I start with 3, all right. 3 times 3 is 9, so I have 9, okay. And then I want to do 9 times 3, that's 7. Okay, this is looking good. And then 7 times 3 is 1, so 3 ends up being a generator. So we can see that this group is cyclic. And just to show you uh, the other elements here, if I were to look at this, the uh, group generated by 7 here, the, the set generated by 7, I would end up getting the same thing. 7 times 7 is 9, and then 9 times 7 is 3, and then, then 3 times 7 brings us back to 1. And then finally we have 9, and the let's see here, we have 9 times 9 is 1, so for this one we just have 1 and 9. But it doesn't matter, we still have at least one element here, we actually have 2, 3, and 7 that generate the entire group. So I can say that U10 is cyclic and abelian. Okay, well that didn't help us too much. We were trying to find something that maybe was cyclic but not abelian, or abelian but not cyclic. Let's try U12. So same idea, group of uh, units modulo 12 here. We have 1, 5, 7, and 11. Here's the group table, and once again we see that it is abelian. We see that we have a nice symmetry across the diagonal. So let's try and figure out if this is cyclic. So again, I can look at the things generated by 1, and 1 is the identity, so that's not going to do very much. Just going to give us back 1. And how about 5? Okay, so 5 means that we have 5, and then 5 times 5 is 1. That's it. 1 times 1 and 5, that's it. How about 7? So we can start with 7, and then 7 times 7 is 1 here. And that's it. Hmm. All right. And how about, oh, I was going to write 9 here. We actually have 11. And 11. And then 11 times 11 is 1. Well, that's not very good. Uh, so this is not cyclic. So we see that we actually have something that's abelian but not cyclic. And that's good. That's what we were trying to find, a counterexample. So now let's try and formalize this a little bit. So we just saw that we had something that was abelian but was not cyclic. So in other words, this is not 
something that works. We know that something is abelian does not necessarily mean that it's cyclic. However, what if something is cyclic? Does that mean that it's abelian? And what you would normally do, like I said, is try and find more examples and see if you could find a counterexample. But in this case, I'm going to say, well, maybe we should try and prove this one. Maybe uh, this does make sense. If something is cyclic, then something is abelian. So let's go ahead and try and prove it. I'm going to state it as a theorem here that every cyclic group is abelian. And we'll go ahead and try and prove this theorem. Okay, so here's the theorem that we are going to try and prove, and we'll do a sketch of a proof here. So every cyclic group is abelian. So let's assume we have a cyclic group. How about we just have a group G, and we'll say that it's generated by some element A. And that just means, and I'm just copying this up here, this definition, that we have a G made up of powers of A. So that's a good place to start. So we have our cyclic group here. And I want to show this as abelian. Well, if I have powers of A in here, I can just take two powers of A. How about A to the M and A to the K? Well, uh, let's see. If I want to show something as abelian, remember showing something as abelian has the, it means it has the commutative property. A times B is B times A. So uh, how about if I look at A to the M times A to the K? What does that give me? Well, that's the same thing as A to the M plus K. And, well, I can just rewrite that as a to the k plus m. And so right there I've shown it. So it's a pretty easy thing to show. Uh, so you can imagine the proof should be pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so here is the proof. Let g be a cyclic group and let a be a generator of g. Then g is made up of powers of a, and that's just what it, the definition of what it means to be a cyclic group. And let G1 and G2 be any two elements of G. Well, if G1 and G2 are elements of G, that means I can write them as powers of A. So I'll write G1 as A to the M and G2 as A to the K for some integers M and K. But then when I multiply G1 and G2 together, that's multiplying A to the M times A to the K, which is A to the M plus K. And a to the m plus k is the same thing as a to the k plus m, which is just a to the k times a to the m, and that's g2 times g1. So we can see that g is in fact abelian. So we've seen that every cyclic group is abelian, but not every abelian group is cyclic.